so winter is finally starting to release its icy grip of death upon us, and that means we're all going to start spending some more time outside. And typically outside and video games don't go well together, but hey, that's why we've got handheld consoles. And when you think about handheld games, there's really two things that come to mind. Puzzle games and Pokemon. So the game that we're going to talk about today takes those two great tastes and blends them together wonderfully. Pokemon Puzzle Challenge for the Game Boy Color. Pokemon Puzzle Challenge was developed by Intelligent Systems and published by Nintendo for the Game Boy Color in December 2000. A spin-off from the main RPG series of Pokemon titles, Puzzle Challenge, as the name implies, is a puzzle game that's wrapped up in dressings from the new at the time Pokemon Gold and Silver titles. The gameplay is lifted directly from Nintendo's own Tetris Attack, or Panel de Pon if you want to get technical, also developed by Intelligent Systems. Rather than playing like Tetris though, gameplay consists of using your cursor to swap the positions of two adjacent colored blocks to try to match three of the same color and clear them out. New blocks are always being shuffled up from the bottom of the screen, so you need to manage the height of the board at all times. A big part of the game is setting up combos, which, as you can tell from all the footage you're going to see, I am quite terrible at. Regardless, matching more than three in a row or setting things up in such a way that disappearing blocks set up more blocks to be cleared as they fall will score you huge points and keep more blocks from appearing for a short time. It's a prime example of easy-to-learn, difficult-to-master design that's incredibly addicting, satisfying, and challenging. While Intelligent Systems could have easily just slapped a basic version of Tetris Attack on this cartridge, put some Pokemon wrapping paper on it, and sat back to count their money, there's actually a staggering amount of content here. Yeah, it's all the same puzzle mechanics forming the backbone of each mode, but there are so many unique variants and tools to teach you the game that it makes what appears to be an easy cash-in at first glance a very worthwhile purchase for any fan of the genre. The basic mode is Marathon, a typical endless mode where you just keep playing until you lose. It starts off easy enough, but as the pace increases, your brain is going to be working overtime very quickly. Challenge mode is where the Pokemon tie-in really shines. You play as gold and silver protagonist Ethan as he challenges the Johto gym leaders one by one in an attempt to earn 8 badges, defeat the Elite Four, and become champion. In this mode, you can see your opponent's Pokemon on the right side of the screen, and as you string together combos and clear surprise blocks, their life bar wears down until you win. Since it's the Game Boy Color, there's no way to see your opponent's board, but they do send garbage blocks onto your board every so often. You start off with just Chikorita, Sendaquil, and Totodile in your stable of Poke Pals, but between gyms, you'll be challenged by random trainers that will give you their Pokémon when you defeat them, filling out your roster. Just be aware that the game uses a battery to save data, and apparently mine's dead, since when I booted this up, all my old stuff was gone. Sad face. It might be a good idea to check yours and replace the battery if you pick up a copy. Time Zone gives you two minutes to score as many points as possible. It seems basic, but constantly challenging yourself to beat your previous high score in such a small amount of time is incredibly addictive. Line Clear challenges you to clear out enough blocks to get below a certain point on the board. It starts off easy, but just like life itself, it gets harder and harder as you progress. Puzzles Mode gives you a predetermined board setup and requires you to clear them in a certain amount of moves. This serves as a fantastic way to teach you some of the basics and train your mind to look for certain things while playing in other modes. Later puzzles turn into total head scratchers, but the feeling of relief and accomplishment you feel when you finally crack a tough puzzle is one of the best parts of the entire game. Garbage mode is like Marathon, though it nixes the increasing scroll speed and instead will drop random garbage blocks on you. Not much to say, except it's incredibly intense. On top of that, the game also features two-player link cable play and tutorials that feature video demos of how to set up impressive combos. So there's a ton of content packed into this little tiny cartridge, and all that alone is enough to justify the purchase. But really, the Pokémon license is kind of the big shiny bow on top of the whole package that makes a great game even better. Many people consider Pokémon Gold and Silver the high point of the series, and it's easy to see why. Fantastic music and masterful use of the Game Boy Color's palette made it an instant classic, taking everything that made the original game so popular and just adding more and more cherries on top. Dropping this puzzle game into the world of Johto allowed Intelligent Systems to really give this game a personality, 
which is what puzzle games need to truly shine. The game features awesome remixes of some of Gold and Silver's best tunes that are an absolute delight to hear as you play the game, including the iconic Pokemon Center theme that plays on the menus. They perfectly capture the sense of playful wonder that defines both the Pokemon series as well as the overall tone of a good puzzle game, making the sum more than the parts here, which is impressive when the parts are incredible on their own. The game's graphics are also quite nice, even ignoring the fact that they're just running on a Game Boy Color. Pokemon sprites look nice, and while they don't feature much animation, when you combine them with their individual cries, it helps make those simple portraits feel like you've actually got your Pokemon battling beside you. Different modes spice it up a bit with nice portraits of the gym leaders too, which help make this feel more like a Pokemon puzzle game, rather than a puzzle game that just had Pokemon dumped into it. The different blocks all make good use of the system's color palette and feature different icons inside to help differentiate them further. It all looks very nice and vibrant, and the pieces are all easy to tell apart from each other, which is paramount in a game of this nature. Even if you don't know a Togepi from a hole in the ground, if you're into puzzle games, this is going to do it for you. Tetris Attack is a tried and true puzzle formula, and you don't even need to have any Pokemon knowledge to enjoy this. It's just good, solid puzzle action that you can take with you anywhere. As with every game I talk about, Pokemon Puzzle Challenge is easy to come by, and it's really not going to cost you a whole lot of money. You can grab the loose cart for about $5, although some people might try to charge more just because it's got the Pokemon name on it. But really, anything under $10 is an incredible value for the amount of gain you're going to get. Pokemon Puzzle Challenge takes one of the most polished and addictive puzzle games in history and dresses it up in one of Nintendo's most beloved franchises to create a Game Boy Color game that's an absolute necessity. With its bevy of modes and top shelf presentation, there's really no excuse to not own this game if you have something to play it on, and since Nintendo's made roughly a thousand devices that you can plug a Game Boy card into, you should have no problem finding a way to enjoy it. Whether you're taking the bus or just hanging out at home, Pokemon Puzzle Challenge has got what you need.